So we have used uh, this thing, uh, command mode we have used. So far we uh, we were using uh, according to our, uh, this expectation here. So Here, uh, what was that? Uh, GitHub. Here is the roadmap. According to this roadmap, in the July month, uh, we are going to use this model scene. So in this model scene, uh, we have used in the command mode. So today, uh, what we are going to do is we will see uh, how do we use that one uh, using uh, graphical user interface. The reason for using, uh, you know, in the command mode is in industry, uh, all the, most of the tools will run using uh, this one. Uh, what we call this uh, Linux on um, Linux operating system. So when we use uh, that, one thing is Linux operating system. The second thing is uh, in the command mode, mostly they will work. Uh, GUI mode, uh, uh, graphical user interface GUI mode uh, is rarely used. So in this uh, uh, today's session, we will see uh, this model sim. So you have this uh, uh, shortcut on your desktop. So let us this. Here, EDA tools. In EDA tools, you have this model sim here. This model sim, uh, you will find this uh, shortcut here. So you have to double click this one. So if you double click this model sim, then you can see this kind of interface will come. So when this kind of interface comes, one thing what you can do is jump start, you can click. And then you go to this create project and then this interface will be seen by you. When you see this kind of interface, here you type your project. Let's say you are doing half adder. So here again, those rules are applicable that you will not have the space like this, half space, half space added. So you will not have this kind of spaces. Uh, if you want to maintain some readability, then a half underscore adder is permissible, but uh, no space. Without space, it must be. The second thing is, if you look at this project location, it is pointing to uh, where we have installed our actual uh, tool. We have installed our tool in C drive, this Intel FPGA folder in, in that 20.1, This uh, at the time of installation, this has tool itself has created, that installer has created this, uh, you know, uh, folder name. And inside that, this subfolder name. There we should not be working. The reason for not working at this uh, location is, by mistake, we may delete some of the required files. Those are system files or software uh, tool files. So what is recommended is, you browse this, clicking this browse, if you have drives, you can select any other drive. For example, if you select this D drive, then you have to create their folder. In the D drive, you have to create a folder. So you create new folder and then give some name here. For example, if you are giving uh, very long uh, examples. So like that, if you are giving name one, two, three, I'm giving because uh, I, I doubt uh, it may be existing here. So I gave uh, very long examples, one, two, three. So now you select this particular folder that you have created, select folder. So now you can see the path is changed here. Very long examples, one, two, three. So now click OK. And then this kind of interface will come. So you can click on this create new file 
and then you can give your file name only just file name so let's say i i, I wanted to give half adder again th that rule is applicable that you will not be uh, creating the space half space adder like that so without space or underscore is perm uh, permissible half underscore adder but this add file as type here you have to select a very log very log you have to select making sense understanding are people yes sir so here uh, half adder uh, no spaces and this very log here uh, there is a system very log don't select that system very log thinking from your side uh, uh, it is uh, very log. It may be very log. Don't think that. This is advanced version of that very log. And then don't abbreviate from yourself. Very log HDL may be like uh, abbreviated as VHDL. So assuming from your side, don't do that. This VHDL is a different language. So don't use this different uh, language. You, we are using a very log. So use this very log. Then click. Uh, Okay, so now you can see here half adder is added to this project. So if any further files are there, you can create them like that, then close. So now this you can open here by double clicking or by going to this open here, this open folder and then this <laughs> file click open. So then you can see here the editor is open here now. In this you can, uh, what you can do? You can start typing earlier how you use it to do that you can do. Okay. Okay, sir. So, sir, only design file. Test bench file also. Okay, sir. That's what I said. Now, further files are required means you can, at that, at that dialog box, you can do that. But later also you can create, I will teach that. For now, you pay attention to this one, what I'm doing here. So this is how you do it. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to close this entire thing. I'm not going to work here. Now I'm going to close. The reason for doing that is to demonstrate the different thing. The different thing is now I don't go to this jump start here. I just close this. If I close this, then what I have to do is go to this file, go to file, go to new. Here is the project. So what it will uh, prompt is, there is an existing project. Want to close that project? Yes, we want to close that project. Then same dialog box. This dialog box you people already had seen. Here you type your half adder. Half adder. Again, those rules are applicable, no space here. So since already I have created half adder, so I'll be giving here one, two, something, some other name. So this is there now earlier what the folder that I have selected here. So other things by default, whatever they are, you are not going to touch them. Click OK. Now this dialog box also you have seen. So now I'm not going to use this dialog box. So now what I am going to do, I just close with that one. I go to this file, new, source. Here again, you see VHDL, very long system, very long, uh, and some other things here. So again, I'm telling you, don't uh, think from your side that you are abbreviating this VHDL. Uh, I mean, Verilog HDL as VHDL. No, this is a separate language. And System Verilog is advanced version of this System Verilog. So you are not going to work with System Verilog. So select what is that you are working with. You are working with Verilog. Select that Verilog. So now you can see here, a file got opened here, but here it is not been added yet. So now what we can do is we can type here something we, we have typed. Let's say that something we have typed. Now you can see here there's the asterisk uh, here, star, default. Just after that, there is the asterisk here where my mouse cursor is pointing. So that it means uh, uh, that file uh, not been saved. We had to save that file. So you can do control S. Now it will come like this here. So you dot V, you keep as it is, dot V here. Remaining untitled one is there now, that you can change it to some other name, whatever. Like in my case, HA dot V I gave. So now I am going to save this one here like this, save. So now what is happening is this file got saved, but it to be added here. So now what we have to do, right click there, 
add to add to project existing file browse that one and here it is ha.v is there here open that one and then click ok simply so now you will see that file got added to the project so there are multiple ways actually to do that so those multiple ways you have to understand and uh, you have to use this one again i am double clicking now I'm not going to use this jump start. If I do this jump start, create project or open project will come. I'm not going to use this one. I just close this one. Now, it, what this tool is doing is, previously what we have worked with, that, that is shown here, that, that project is shown here. Now, I don't want to uh, work here. I want to work a new project. So I go to file, new project here. Click on the project. This prompt will come that already existing current project. Want to close that? Yes, we want to close that. Yes. Now create the project. Here you are creating, let's say today, uh, let's see this um, no, Max 4 by 1. So this is the project name that we have given. And where we want to work this project location in this Verilog examples. But Verilog examples here, what is happening here is, Already in the very log, uh, this uh, one, two, three, I have created earlier one project. That project is existing. So I don't want to mess up with that project. So in this very log examples uh, uh, master folder, you create subfolder. This subfolder I'm creating. So now I'm calling it as a mux four by one. Mux four by one. Select that folder. Select a folder. So now you see D, Verilog examples one two three. Inside that there is a folder called Mux four by one. There where all files will be uh, residing now. Future files that you are going to create, they will reside there. Now the other two default library name and this copy uh, settings from this this will be like a copy library mapping. These two you are not going to touch. Leave them as it is. Click OK. Now this prompt will come, this prompt. So here you create new file, don't do that. You can do no problem. The earlier what I had demonstrated uh, at the very uh, beginning, but there is other way around. Close this and go to this file, new, and now go to source here, very log here, select the very log. So yeah, editor will be opening here. There you start typing. So we are going to uh, now work with the uh, max four by one. So this max four by one here, uh, max four, uh, this is max four by one. And uh, you know, max is going to have, uh, this is, uh, max is going to have, max four by one going to have four inputs. So for four inputs, uh, we have four inputs. Four inputs. One, two, three, four. These are the four inputs. A, B, C, D. Let's say like that. A, B, C, D. Now you have one output. That is your Y. Now you have how many select lines are required for that? Two. This knowledge, assuming that you possess this knowledge, digital electronics uh, knowledge, that is a prerequisite for Verilog HDL. So if you do not possess that, you please tell me that. So we need two select lines. So now select lines, depending upon this S1, S0, it may be like 0, 0, it may be 0, 1, it may be 1, 0, it may be one. Now, what is that we are, we are going to do here? This output. So, A will come here, whatever A possess. This this is the port. port. Port is A. This port, through this port, you may give zero or you may give one. So, then when zero, zero is there, if you are giving zero on the output, zero is seen. If you are giving on the port A, one, then one is seen. So for that reason, we say simply A will come here. A will come is A, that alphabet A will not come. 
on signal uh, on port a whatever the signal is there your signal may be uh, zero your signal may be one that signal will be seen on the port port y making sense or not yes sir when zero one is there you you will see the b when one zero is there you will see the c when one one is there you will see the d so now here what is that we have to understand we have these are the primary inputs a b c d S1, S0, they are also primary inputs. Y is a primary output. So this is one thing that we have to understand. The second thing that we have to understand is how we put uh, here the port list here. So port list can be kept here simply like uh, uh, just now what I have uh, explained here. A, B, uh, C, D, and uh, your select lines. That is S1, S0, and then Y. Now you see uh, this port list. Now you tell me, what if I keep here simply I, I, and uh, S, and Y? How compact uh, this uh, port list and uh, this port list, how verbose it is, this, this one. So in this case, how is that? Uh, how uh, how is that? It has become so compact because, like, instead of giving A, B, C, D here, what if if we give the bus like this? We are giving the bus here. That is I signal, I vector type we are giving, and even this instead giving S one and S zero like this. We are going to give one bus here, that is vector type, yes, we are going to give. Now, this will be uh, scalar only, this output. So if you are giving vector type, then the declaration will become different here. Like this, we supposed to have four, so, uh, the uh, vector size must be four bit. This is how you declare that, I. And the select line, two bits. The size vector type uh, size is two bits. In this case, if you compact way, if you go, this is how your declaration should be happening. Type declaration, in type declaration. And if you go with this one scalar scalar ports, and this is how you have to have the uh, you know type declaration even in the port list also. Making sense uh, this discussion to everyone. Yes, sir. If it's not making sense, please ask. Don't type anything because uh, I have to come out of this uh, platform here where I am and I have to check who, uh, who typed or uh, what they typed. Unmute yourself, speak. Okay, the, assuming that uh, you... Uh, it is clear because uh, I cannot follow, make several follow-ups like that. You have to unmute and you have to respond. So this is how it is. So for that reason, now what we do here is uh, we just go here and uh, oh, what is this? Is not responding. Something not responding. Well, this one is not responding. Close this program. Then uh, go here again. Double click this one. For some reason, I don't know the reason why 
know, that was behaving that way. So I just jump start and open the project because I created the mux I know that is there. So I have just opened now. So what I do, I just go and uh, create the file here, file, source, very log file. So now I come here, I start writing that, uh, whatever the discussion that I carried, that I'm going to do, module, mux, four by one. And here I'm going to put that compact form, I, S, Y. And then here you are going to have end module. And then now you are going to put here, that is your input. And I discussed already this input is uh, vector vector type and the vector size is four bits. And uh, there is another input and the vector, it, uh, that also vector type and the size is two bits, that is select line. And I have one output and that output is my Y. Is that clear to everyone what I have done here? Yes, sir. Yes, others, the only one candidate is there or what? What is the point of uh, attending these persons? I don't know. Those who are not responding, they are they are kind of headache. Uh, frequently, we cannot ask them to uh, respond. I don't know why they are. Okay. So here, um, that's how it is. Uh, this declaration is. Now, what we are going to do here is uh, we can uh, adopt uh, any, uh, you know, modeling style. So far, modeling style means you are familiar. We have gate level modeling, switch level modeling, the uh, least one, uh, I mean, low, lowest abstraction level is switch level modeling. And then we have little bit higher abstraction gate level, little bit higher abstraction is uh, data flow, little bit uh, further higher abstraction is um, our, uh, what we call that, uh, behavioral level modeling. So if you do the behavioral level modeling here, uh understand this uh, no i will go to that behavior level later on but today we'll do with uh, uh this this one that is data flow level modeling assign y equal to so what we are going to check here is we are going to check this s value is s equal to three this one we are going to check question mark so this is called ternary operator understand this ternary operator so this ternary operator has got, uh, you know, uh, this kind of syntax, like uh, y equal to yes, question mark. If, is this true? That is the meaning. Yes, question mark means is yes equal to uh, you can take anything, uh, zero, let's say, question one, is that true? But simply putting yes means uh, it is not zero, it is one. If you simply put a yes question mark, the meaning is, is yes equal to one? That is the meaning. Meaning, is yes true? This is also the other way is true. Is yes true? So if yes, true, the true statement will be executed. Whatever you put here, that will be assigned to Y. Let's say you are keeping here one. That one will be assigned to Y. Else, else, this is called else. This is colon, colon, zero. If, if this is not true, if this is not true, if S is not equal to one, then this, whatever you keep, not only zero, whatever you keep, that will be assigned to Y. So this is called ternary operator. This is called ternary, ternary operator or conditional operator or conditional operator. Is that clear this, how it is working? Yes, sir. So now here. Yes, sir. 
if the s equal to 3 that we are checking if that is true if s equal to 3 then uh, again the uh, So this one uh, we already seen here. We have this S1 and S0. If 0, 0, then we are going to have on Y, A. If 0, 1, then we are going to have B. If 1, 0, then we are going to have C. If 1, 1, then we are going to have D. So then this one we are checking is S equal to 3. This is the 3, right? This is the decimal 3. This is 2. This is 1. This is 0. Is S equal to 3? If 3, then what is that we have to assign here? This uh, the, We have I, I, let's say this A means I of 0. I of 0. B means I of 1. C means I of 2. Uh, D means I of 3. So now what's supposed to be uh, here? What's supposed to be here? If, if S is 3, then, then I of 3. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Else... I have to be a little strict here uh, because uh, the, such fillers are not required here. Mm -hmm. As to whom we are, uh, is this one? Okay, so here the this one you got the point here. Once this is done, once this is done, that I check at this one, is this S3? Uh, if 3, yes, this is true. True means this first statement will be executed. That is I of 3 value, whatever I of 3 value is there, that will be assigned to this Y. If it is not true, then it has to go to this, this after colon. After colon, whatever is there, there it has to go. But there it has to go. Okay, it has gone there. But what it has to do, it has to check again the yes value. Is yes equal to two this time here? That is what we check here. Is yes equal to two? Question mark. So this entire thing actually comes in parenthesis here. For readability purpose, we keep in parenthesis. If yes equal to two here, if this is yes equal to two, this one, then C is assigned to the Y. C means in our case I of 2 it is. So we, we assign here I of 2. That is what we do here. Else that is colon. If it is not true, if it is not true, this S is not uh, 2. Then what we have to do? We have to go after this colon. After this colon. After this column, if you go, what is that? What is that? Then you, you have to do. If S is not equal to two, if S is not equal to two, then what is that we have to check? Is S equal to one? That we have to check. So that is what we do here. Uh, this is uh, uh, that is we again put in parentheses and we check is S equal to one? Is S equal to one? Question one. This after this one, after this column, we for readability again we have to keep the parenthesis here. Is S equal to one? If one, then from here, this one here. If this is one, then B will be assigned to the Y. B means in our case it is I of one. So that is I of one. Else what? Else what? If it is not uh, 1, then only we left with S equal to 0. So we don't need to check such condition. What we can do is I of uh, 0 straight away we can write. 
I of zero. Now, see this one here. This parenthesis, all open parenthesis needs to be closed. This we have opened here. This, this one we have opened here and this close is there here. But this open one needs to be closed here. So that we are closing here. So this, this parenthesis been closed here. Now this parenthesis already been closed here. But for this condition, the true statement is this. The false statement is this. This complete. This complete one is the false statement. So this parenthesis, this that we have opened, that will be that needs to be closed here. So this one, one condition that we have checked upon uh, this condition satisfied, then true statement th is this one, else the false statement. This complete one is the false statement. But within the false statement, there are again multiple statements you can witness, you can see here. You have this here, this condition check. Inside that, this is the, uh, like if condition is fulfilled and this, this is, uh, this whatever is the true statement that will be assigned to the Y. Else, again, multiple statements are here. So you have to take care of this open parenthesis and closing parenthesis. So, and then once it is done, this statement is done, this completely is done, then you have to put a semicolon. So this is called ternary operator. This is a ternary operator. And uh, the modeling style adopted here is data flow modeling. Because in data flow only we use this assign keyword and operators we will use. Here ternary operator we are using this. This kind of writing is called ternary operator. You write some uh, ass uh, assign here, assign statement and then some uh, variable and you check some uh, condition and is that true? Then true statement you will be assigned this y else false statement will be assigned here. And then semicolon. So this is called ternary operator. Question mark and column is the ternary operator. So that is about the ternary operator. Now... Uh, Sir, huh? why are we taking decimal instead of binary? While why are we taking... Values of here, here you are talking about the select lines. Yes, sir. Why is it in decimals? Uh -huh. So, yeah, yeah, okay, I will answer that. So, uh, what I am going to do is single line comments are kept like this. Single line comments are double uh, slash, forward slash. Multiple line comments you wanted to keep in very long means. One forward slash, then this asterisk. Then down the line somewhere uh, you have multiple lines, then star that is asterisk, then this forward slash. So these are for multiple line comments. Single line comment means only this, uh, this one, or, uh, you know, double forward slash. Now I commented this one. I just copy this one, copy and uh, paste it here. This three, I can write here two tick B one one. That is base format system. What we call is there are two approaches here. We have uh, we have base format system in Verilog. Base format number we can represent using base format approach, or directly we can assign directly like like this two three earlier th this three if you directly assign it is treated by the compiler as a decimal number and this decimal number how it treats is integer means 32 bits it will be assigning 32 bits internally like if two is there for us, it is one zero binary equivalent is one zero, but for the very large compiler, it is total 32 uh, bits. Among 32 to anyway, 
one zero is there. Remaining all it is going to treat as zero 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 like that. That thirty two internally compiler is uh, treating converting any decimal number to thirty two bit binary equivalent. So now what is that we can do is we want to stop this kind of uh, uh, you know uh, conversion by the internally uh, user actually don't uh, see that one. But uh, when you do the simulation, their simulation performance for big designs, we definitely will have uh, impact. Uh, like it will slow down uh, because uh, so uh, so many bits it has to take care of. So in, in that case, simulation performance will be affected in for bigger designs. Uh, because here when it is converting this three, that is, uh, you know, one, one binary and rest all the remaining 30 bits as zero. Among this, when it is trying to assign to this yes, but yes has got only ca uh, uh, capacity of holding two weights. So uh, from LSB, like this one and this one will be assigned anyway successfully to S of zero and S of one. Remaining anyway will be discarded. So, but what is the point of, uh, you know, uh, 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 letting the compiler to deal this way of 32 bit? So what we can do is we can very well tell the compiler, don't do that, uh, uh, you know, treating of uh, 32 bit. You treat them uh, in a required number of bits only. Required number of bits only means here, if you put here two, this tick B. And if you put here like one zero, telling that this one zero is a binary format telling the compiler that this here, this one zero is a binary format. And the, and the number of bits here in the binary that we are dealing are here two. That is what we are telling. So we can have like two tick, I mean, uh, we can have octal number, lowercase O or uppercase O, just a minute, somebody at the door. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So now what is that we have to do is uh, this can be lowercase o or uppercase o, octal number representation, hexa lowercase h or uppercase h. Even we can put decimal also lowercase d, uppercase d, and binary lowercase b or uppercase b. The syntax is like this, uh, you know, uh, two. This tick b can be together and the space can be there, but you cannot have like two tick and then space B like that. It is not permissible. This tick B we have to have together. And then here you put that whatever the number that you are going to keep. Like in our case, uh, here we are keeping, uh, let's say, instead keeping this three, we are going to keep two tick B one one. Now compiler is not going to convert this one to the 32 bit. It just we instructed the compiler that only two bits you treat. So it is going to treat them this uh, two bits only. And it is said in binary. So they stay in bi binary. So like that, this one, uh, this two can be like two tick B, uh, one zero we can write. This one also we can write. You can write here to tick uh, B, that is one. So one means zero one, that is, we mean that zero one. So that, that's how we can very well uh, do this way uh, here, uh, two tick B and this is uh, two tick uh, B, that is two we mean actually, so one zero. And here we mean two tick B, zero one then in this case uh like only this is only two two bits are dealt by the internally by the uh verilog compiler is that clear to everyone yes sir yes sir so this is about only uh this uh, you know so far discussion is only about the logic development uh, design file development so this now what we can do is this design file like uh, what we have uh, uh, you know developed here 
uh, you can see the star here. It means we have to save this file. One, one thing you can do is click this save or uh, here from here control yes also you can do. Control yes if you do, this will, a prompt will come. There what you have to do is leaving the dot V, you can write here max those conventions earlier I told. Like uh, whatever the design that you are doing, that naming convention you follow. Don't give some other irrelevant name. So, and then click on save. So now that asterisk has gone here. Now to uh, create another file. So you have to go to the file, new, source, and this Verilog again. Verilog, 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 no other. So now here, what you have to do here? Here, you have to create the test bench. Here you have your design file. Here are the tabs bottom. You can see I'm clicking here, here. So you have the tabs here. So here is a design file. Here is, you are going to develop your test bench. So back code, your uh, time scale, one nanosecond slash one picosecond. And then here module, and this is the TB underscore convention is TB uh, test bench, T test B bench underscore max whatever the design that you are testing any name you can give again i'm uh, emphasizing that but importance is like uh, whatever the design that we are doing whatever the test bench that we are writing that is the way to have so here this input will become reg here in the test bench and uh, this input also will become the reg here and this output will become the wire Again, here I told several times in the past also that uh, uh, how we are going to generate test bench, you have to understand what actually you need here. This is your hardware. Already they're ready. This MUX 4 by one <laughs> is ready. Now what is <laughs> required here? How do you test? Several times, uh, uh, you know, students ask, uh, should I have to change even this one? Like what I give here? Only, only I have to change this one. Or I have to uh, uh, like keep this one as it is or change. Or I have to change this two simultaneously. Such questions. Are bhai. <laughs> here, what is expected here? Let's say, let's say you are <laughs> keeping here. This is 0, 1, 0, 1. Now, if you are playing with this, this one, one time interval you are giving 0, 0, other time interval 0, 1, other time interval 1, like that. Then you have to get accordingly for this, uh, you know, selection. This appropriate values needs to be transferred onto the output. Is that happening or not? That is the test actually you have to do. <coughs> this is one way of doing. The other way of doing is, this entire thing happens for, let's say, uh, for one time interval, you are keeping this one and this one and this one. For four, four different time intervals, you are keeping zero, one, zero let's say you you are in doubt whether these inputs are properly working or not then in that case what you can do take four more time intervals but this time you switch this one here this is one this is zero this is one this is zero that's all that that thinking process should be there with the student not that every every bit is uh, you know imparted by the teacher no Every bit is imparted by the teacher. That is not a learning process. That is a spoon feeding process. Uh -huh. Learning uh, comes through. The candidate also has to think, needs to think. So that's how you do the testing. Not that this nonsense doubts that student often ask. Who asks such questions means those who are habituated to spoon feeding. So when Making sense or not this one, what I'm trying to say? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now this is reg, reg is done. Now what is that we have to do? The module that we wanted to test that we have to instantiate. So this is the module that I wanted to test. I just copy this. I come here and paste it here. And I, I have to have some instantiation name. So I'm giving DUT. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to have the procedural uh this block initial inside this only loops uh, all that possible so that is why this is required initial now i am going to have multiple statements so i am going to have begin and end 
and this module needs n module so i am going to put n module also in advance so now what i am going to do i want to display in the console for that i need this dollar monitor and then open the parenthesis and the semicolon is the part of syntax inside double quotes whatever that i wanted to see that i have to keep and these variables are required so i'm just copying them and pasting them here and pasting them here uh, and then here i want simulation time also this at the rate time is for my purpose uh, there's nothing to do anything you can keep there just simply simulation time also you can write instead at the rate time then but percentage uh, percentage uh, this uh, g is for the time so and then ns is for my reference that is in nanoseconds uh, like that for my understanding and now this i is uh, uh, you know uh, in which format that i wanted to see so i want to see in binary format so i am keeping percentage uh, you know uh, b and then uh, this yes i this yes also i want to see in uh, binary format so that is percentage b and this y also i want to see in a binary form so now this percentage g i have to relate with this dollar time because this dollar time is the one system function which is going to return simulation time and this is going to correspond to th this one here and this i yes uh, uh, i yes y is anyway they are corresponding to this percentage b percentage b what you care now we are going to generate the stimulus here. So how I am going to generate the stimulus here, as I told, uh, this, uh, you know, I'm going to keep four tick B, zero one, zero one. At this instance of time, I'm going to keep my select line here, uh, two tick uh, B, zero, zero. Now hash five delay. So, then my yes to tick B, zero one. Is that order required means again, even such questions uh, student, uh, they ask like, is that order required like zero one, I have to go, can I uh, put here one one? Yes, you can put in any order. You This is just testing we are randomly, anything you can give here, anything you can give and see that whether that functionality is met or not. This is just for our reference, uh, our, uh, you know, this is for us easy that we have followed like zero, zero combination, zero, one combination. For that purpose, only we are, uh, you know, doing all that. So that is, I'm just copying this and uh, testing it here. Now here, zero, zero is over. This zero, one is uh, over here. This one, zero here, one, zero. And then here it is one one. So then what I'm going to do is uh, this entire thing I will copy anyway because uh, uh, you know uh, till this point here, all these four instances are from zero 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 one one zero one one. Now what I do is I just copy this. Control C. And uh, after this uh, delay. I, I'm going to paste this one here. This time, uh, as I told, I'm going to switch this one to 1010. Is that required like 1010? Can I put all ones? Yes, you can put. Can I put 001? Yes, you can put. Anything is fine. So that's how it is. Um, and then uh, hash fine. And then dollar stop. And then this begin end, I already kept here, this uh, end and end module. So almost done everything. Uh, so now this, you see the star here, asterisk, and then uh, you can go to this save and click save. It is going to prompt this way. Now you give appropriate name, that uh, convention I told already to be followed, TB underscore max four by one, and then save this one. So now if you see here under this project here, this here, the, no files here, no files here in this region. So we have to add the uh, files to the project. Right click, add to project existing file and go to browse. I repeat this one again, what I'm doing here. This project not having any files here. 
I, I have to add this created files to this project. So to uh, add those files to the project, right click, add to project, existing file, and then browse, and then select these two files, and then click open. And then leave as it is this reference from current location, and then click OK. So now you see here, question mark, question mark here. So go to this compile. Compile all you have to do. Compile all. If you do compile all, if everything is correct, then what you can see here is in the console here. This is called the console here. You will see this compile of max uh, successful and compile of TB. This is successful. Let's make some mistake purposefully here, comma, uh, here, uh, semicolon, here, semicolon. Remove and uh, I'm saving control S. Yes. And then again, compile. Uh, that is, uh, I have to bring this window, uh, otherwise I will take this up. Uh, so now compile, compile all. So now if you see here, it is said uh, that compile of mux 4 by one dot v was successful, but compile of tb failed with one errors. And here uh, into cross mark is there here. So now if you double click this one, you will see here, you will see here near I syntax error, unexpected identifier. It is saying in which file the error is. It is saying here, if you read carefully, it is tb underscore mux four by one dot v and in parenthesis, this 14 is telling that it is near 14th line. So that's how you read where the error is. Now you go to this 14th line. If you see at the 14th line, everything is all right. Student often, they are, they, they just don't, out of box, they don't think. They just go to 14 uh, and see that everything is fine. So what you have to do is, it is giving some clue, 14, something missing like that. So see just above that, below that, so if you see above that here, semicolon is missing. If you see the below that, semicolon is missing. So now save this file. <laughs> again, go to compile and compile all. So now you see again this uh, successful and this is also successful. So once this is successful, so what you have to do is, there are two ways now. One, one thing is go to the simulate and start simulation. Now locate your work folder where your work folder is. There are several folders that you can see here. You have to locate where my work folder is. So in some cases, it may be up like this here. In some cases, it may be down here somewhere. So locate that, that folder, work folder. Here is a plus sign, expand that plus. Select your test bench module name. Test bench module name, not design file module name. Test bench module name and then click OK. That is one way. The second way is, here are the tabs you can see. One is a project tab, the other is libraries tab. So in the libraries tab, again, work folder is there. Expand that, select your this um, uh, test bench module name, right click, click on simulate. That is another way. So both ways you can follow, any one way you can follow. So if you click that way, then you can see here sim underscore default has come now. Sim underscore default. And you can see some of the objects been added here. I, S, Y like that. And right click this one. Under sim default, right click, add wave. Do this add wave. So if you do this add wave, now you can see here this I, S, Y. They've been added to this waveform window here. Now the tabs also you can see here, apart from this dot .v file, like design file and test bench file, you can see the wave uh, tab also. Now you go to here, this 100 PS is there, na? there you go and change that PS to N, just P to N. So it means what, till that time interval, 100 nanoseconds. And uh, here there is a run, here there is a run, uh, you know, icon here. Click on that run. So once you click that, you can see here, uh, you know, in the console, this display you can see. And when you go to wave here, this wave is there now. Go to wave here. Now, what you do here is, 
there is a this one here zoom full click on that zoom full now you can see all of this uh, you know being displayed here so zoom full if you do you can click here cursor will come here when cursor comes here you can see the corresponding here you have this i here this is i corresponding to i you have the values here 0 1 0 1 and you have the s yes, just underneath you have the s yes, corresponding to where this vertical bar is there you have the your s yes value 0 0 when 0 0 what is expected here this is i of 0 is expected i of 0 what is i of 0 i of 0 is 1 here so you are 1 state 1 st state 1 so this is 1 1 is you know seen on the output why now if you go to here just clicking here this, this vertical uh, vertical this marker will move anywhere you click corresponding to this marker that is time interval you will have these values displayed here that's how it is so this is called a uh, gui mode or uh, graphical user interface mode gui mode gui mode but this is uh, uh, the reason for not introducing this one to you people is the industry uses the command line mode only mostly. So the previous sessions like past three or four sessions, what we have done in the command mode is the same here that you see in this console, the display. Uh, only thing here is this, uh, you know, uh, wave waveform window also you can see here. So that's up to you now how you actually do the things. So, but I recommend going that way. That is, uh, you know, um, command mode. There also you can analyze. Sometimes it may be required to analyze graphically like this. In that case, you must know this one. That's why I have introduced this graphical uh, mode also. So let me come back again here. But before I uh, come back here, how do you uh, close this simulation means go to the simulation, simulate and simulation. So then it will prompt like this. Like, are you sure uh, you want to quit simu simulating? Yes, click on uh, yes. Now you will be back here. Is that making sense? Yes, sir. So this is the entire thing, how you use this the tool that we have installed. This tool without, you know, opening in a GUI mode, uh, past uh, three sessions, four sessions, we were doing it in the command mode, uh, mode. So that is a lot easier and that's how the recommended is. Uh, GUI mode is also used, but, uh, uh, you know, for uh, sometimes it is not possible to maybe uh, see this way. Uh, in a graphically like in the waveform uh, waveform window only we have to check in some cases some scenarios at that time GUI, uh, GUI mode is used so know that there are two ways that is one learning uh, takeaway of today's session and uh, the second takeaway is this ternary uh, operator itself how we how we are using this one so try modeling uh, using this uh, ternary operator, uh, your uh, two is to one. This is four is to one I have done, four by one. Try doing uh, two by one because doing, uh, you know, eight by one will be, uh, you know, a bit uh, complex here. That's why we don't recommend that way. Yes, we can do that, but at least uh, know that how, uh, how to use uh, this ternary operator for, by uh, for the example max two by one and try developing the test bench for the same so that is one thing that uh, uh, we have uh, today and uh, i was having something else in my mind mm. yeah that is uh, one thing the second thing is uh let's say you wanted to take uh this out you know this uh, this output here in the console whatever this uh, this uh, you know results have come you want to capture them in one file because if you see your location in d drive very log examples in that max 4 by 1 is here so if you go to your um, 
uh, you know, that is uh, D drive and uh, very long examples here. Then max four by one. Here you don't have any, uh, like these results, uh, you know, you cannot find them here. The only way to find these results are from here, this in the console, but you wanted uh, them to be in a, uh, one file, these results. So in that case, we have something called file handling uh, uh, system tasks also. So what is that required is pay attention because previously what all you have done, uh, then you can uh, uh, try this file, you know, writing down the result to the file. So for that, what is required is you have to uh, initialize one file uh, handler. So with the integer, integer, let's say FH, FH stands for file handler. Anything you can give, by the way, that name, that is that must be integer. That is one thing. First step is that one. Second step is under this initial, after that begin, we have to uh, open a file. So how do we open a file? Uh, like this, we open a file. Uh, we have this FH, that is file handler, dollar, F open, file open, dollar, file open, F open, open the parenthesis, inside the parenthesis, put the file name that you want. So I want max four by one uh, underscore output, output dot txt that is my file name max 4 by 1 underscore output dot txt in double quotes it must be comma and the write mode so it we must have the uh, you know permission to write inside so that is write mode so after opening this file what i wanted to do is i want to uh let this output here that the output that has come to the console not onto the console rather to the file this file uh, to this file so in that case what i have to do is i just comment out this one and then i just copy this entire thing because that is required again uh, i paste it here now what i do is dollar f monitor i just put uh, you know, F monitor that is file 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 related F dollar F monitor, and I had to put here this this file handler just inside that F H F H comma, and everything is same. This this uh, format is same. So this simply th uh, that is dollar F monitor. Instead, monitor, dollar monitor, F monitor. That is related to the file. Now, what I do is, I just go with the same, like whatever is there. Uh, I mean, uh, this is stimuli will be same. And once this is, I have done with this my stimuli. So what I do here is, uh, I have to close this file also. Once, like I have opened my file, I have written down to the file. Then I had to close my file. So before I stop my simulation. So for that, uh, this, I use this uh, dollar F close and uh, open the parenthesis. Inside, you just put file handler name, the FH. In my case, I just gave FH file handler. And then, uh, some delay and then you are going to stop your simulation. So that's how it is. Simply I repeat this integer. The file handler must be of type integer. That is one thing. Second thing is we have to open the file in write mode. To open the file in write mode, uh, file handler equal to $f open 
open the parenthesis inside that two double quotes will be there separated by comma in first double quote file name you will put dot txt extension is text file in that we wanted to write and the file uh, will have write permissions so in the write mode you are opening w by keeping that then instead of using dollar monitor you are going to use dollar f monitor so file related system task but only the change is just before this uh, all this format we are going to put file handler inside so that is the change and then rest of the stimuli is same but before you close your simulation stop your simulation you have to close the file itself so that file is closed using dollar f close this system task inside this parenthesis you keep the file handler now you save this one again you have to go and compile this one compile all again you switch between these two here that is project and uh, library here project if you see two tick marks uh, are there meaning no errors now you can go to this library and select this one from the work folder remember from the work folder test bench module name right click and simulate so once you have done that one then here p is there means pico seconds uh, replace that p with a nanoseconds so and then run so this time we are not going to see in the waveform that's why we did not add them to the waveform our intention is to see that file is generated so now i am going to end my simulation here by going to simulate and end simulation and i minimize this i just go to my that uh, directory where uh, you know i have my design here so I had to locate uh, whether that file been created. If you look at this mux here, uh, file is here. Now inside that file, whatever on the console has come is seen here inside, uh, you know, in the file format. Making sense? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So with yes, this, uh, let's stop today's session. If you have any doubts, please ask.